I'm in Estonia, in Tallinn, the capital, uh, former Soviet Republic of Estonia. It's an amazing country actually, in its uh, roughly seven, eight hundred years of existence. It's only had independence for about 30 years. 20 of those have been since the end of the Soviet Union with a uh, small period of about 10 years between World War One and World War Two. It's a great little medieval town actually, it's got a great feel to it, great old churches like this one and an old castle nestled on top of the hill. Um, and it's surprising that it still exists in its uh, very old fashioned way given that it's been invaded by the Germans and the Swedes and the Finns and the, then the Russians took it during World War II and then the Germans took it back. So a lot of bombing and wars and attacks like that, which makes it all pretty incredible to think that you still have an old town like this with beautiful old streets, cobblestones winding their way up and down little nestled areas that haven't been destroyed in the various wars that have plagued this place. Anyway, it's April, it's Easter. Look, cobblestone laneways like that, haven't changed. This old uh, walled city of Tallinn got uh, UNESCO World Heritage Protection in 1997, the whole old town. Look, if you want to go to an old medieval town, uh, and to try and get a feel of what it would be like. This is a pretty good example. But then you can get to the edge of the old town walls and look out over the new town and the ports out over the Baltic Sea towards Finland. Over there, I think, more or less. And you know, Estonia is responsible for more stuff that impacts on your day-to-day -day life than you might give it credit for. Estonia is very technologically switched on. Lots of Wi-Fi all over the city. You can basically get free Wi-Fi everywhere you go. And Skype. Skype was invented and founded and is still based in Tallinn, in Estonia. So for those of you who like making Skype phone calls, thank you, Estonians. The uh, Finno-Urgic tribes first set in and around Estonia in about 3000 BC. Now one of the things that uh, makes that particularly interesting is Estonian is a language like almost no other. Together with only Finnish and Hungarian, there's no linkage to the Latin Romantic or European languages. They're all freestanding, those three languages, tracking back to those Franco Ubich times in 3000 BC. So everyone finds Estonian difficult. As do I, finding my way around these little cobblestone streets. Okay then, just some basic facts for you. Uh, Italian has about um, 400,000 people in it. Uh, and Estonia are about 1.3 million. So it's quite a uh, sleepy sort of place. Now, given that this is a working day and I'm in the middle of the capital and the Prime Minister's office is just up there and the Chancellery, it's amazingly quiet. But, beautiful. How they survived World War I and World War II and a dozen other wars since the 1300s, I'll never know. But I'm going to one of the more interesting parts of the wall now. It's called Kaikindi Kop, which loosely translates Peep into the Kitchen, which is a shot tower um, that played an important part in the Lothian Wars and apparently nine of, um, of Ivan IV's cannonballs are still embedded in its walls. Let's go and have a look. And this is the cannon tower kicking to cook. And if you look very closely, you can see where there are still the cannonballs of Ivan IV embedded in the wall. 
as I'm walking down the bastion of uh, Tallinn, I reflect upon it. It's a, not a bad little town. It's got a mix of old and new. I suppose part of that is a result of what was uh, blown up or bulldozed in various wars. You'll see the one of the last things I'm going to visit is the old KGB headquarters in Italian. And that just reminds what a nasty time the Estonians had underneath the Soviet occupation. Uh, but it's a nice, quiet, sleepy little town. Um, good mix, nice, friendly people, and kind of enjoyable for a quiet weekend getaway. Couldn't do much more than a couple of days. Though.